Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. This video is going to be specifically about these types of milling machines. And I can tell you that there's probably going to be a lot of tips in here that will apply to other styles as well. So it's definitely worth a watch. Naturally, after many years of doing machining on a daily basis, your toolbox will end up with a variety of small attachments and things that you've made to make your life easier. That's exactly what this video is going to be about. Stops, work positioning devices, not necessarily clamping, but I will touch off on something because uh, there are a few things that I continue to see that just bother me and I figured I would clear it up for all of you. Alright, let's put this thing on a tripod and we will start with the quill and work our way down to the table. Okay, anybody that's ever attempted to do any precision milling based on this little stop right here, that one, will know and have probably noted that the O-ring, or excuse me, not the O-ring, the snap clip right here at the bottom allows for a great deal of movement of the thumb wheel. Let's zoom in on that. Okay, that clip on the bottom of that particular adjustment screw will allow for vertical movement of this thumb wheel and that could really blow whatever you're trying to achieve based on how much pressure you put on the uh, handle on the side of the machine. Watch for the movement of the wheel as the pressure from the stop makes contact. It's minimal, but I hope that the camera's picking up on that. All right, at any rate, trust me, it moves. If we put an indicator on the bottom of this spindle and pull down on the handle, depending on how hard you pull that handle, we'll show you exactly how much movement there is. You want a more solid foundation for that? Pull the handle down about a half an inch and lock it off. Put a collar underneath the bottom adjustment nut. And now this whole assembly moves up and down. What you want to do is screw down on this until you've reached the extent of the travel. Leave it in place. Now what you've effectively done is you just wiped out your ability to use your power down feed. So if you try to engage the down feed, it's going to continue to kick out and that's when you get your reminder that that's there. It might be a good idea to make that out of uh, something that you can coat with red dicum or something else that sticks out and goes, hey, you got to take this out. So anyway, that's one stop. Now when you come down with the machine, you hit that center wheel, it's like rock solid. So that's a really good little attachment to have in your box. Go ahead and get one. Now let's move to the top of this particular assembly. If you're countersinking or spot drilling a bunch of small pieces and it's only the last quarter of an inch worth of travel that you use and in between parts you need both hands, it is frustrating to have the machine return all the way up. It's also frustrating to have to bring the table all the way up to avoid this. That's where this little guy comes in handy, right there. Spring loaded, threaded on the inside. This would be a great project to make if you are new to this and you just wanted to knock something out for yourself. This is a fantastic little item to have. This goes on top. It is a rebound stop. There you go. It's only moving the quarter inch, the last quarter inch that you need. It gives you enough room to put your part underneath your countersink, spot drill, whatever, and it keeps the whole spindle whole quill from returning all the way up. And because it's threaded, it's infinitely adjustable wherever you want it. It's a great little tool to have in your box. And it probably wouldn't be all that hard to make one. Nice little thing to have. 
Saves you a lot of stroking on the on the handle. All right, we're going to break off of the column right now, the quill, with the addition of the collar underneath the bottom stop nut, and one of these in the in the box helps out quite a bit. Let's move down to the table. Let's take a look at a couple of different types of vice stops. This has got to be the quickest, dirtiest, easiest project you could possibly make. And if you're going to make one of these, drive the screw head size so that it's even with the bottom of the stop or slightly above. That way when you install it on the jaw, it'll still roll real nice and you can still tighten down the head. Now, I got to say, if you're going to use a stop like this and you're going to offset pieces so that it hangs out the side of your machine for machining, please put another piece on the opposite side to keep this jaw from moving back and forth. All right, this can be a piece that's in process and at the last minute swap a good part for a part that needs to be machined, but two pieces, guys, ladies, two pieces. All right. Simple, quick, dirty. These are 1032 screws, so I guess that's about a four millimeter, five millimeter. Be about a five millimeter screw for anybody working in metric. And just make it fit the size of the jaw. And do yourself a favor, make sure that it also does not hit the top of the parallel that you probably will use most often. Because if you put that in there and it pinches the parallel down, well, then you got a problem. Now you don't have a problem, but it's a lot easier if you can change the parallel without having to move the stop. So do be aware that these two surfaces down here do not come in contact. Doesn't have to be much room, but there has to be some. Alright, that is a jaw attached stop. Let's take a walk over to the CNC for a second. And I will show you the CNC style stop. This is a Kurt 688 vice. Actually, three Kurt 688 vices. And back here, there's this little nifty thing hanging right on the mill, right into the body of the vice. And we have this little black hook looking device that coincidentally can lift out and go right in that channel on the back of the CNC vice. So it's an automatic, it's right there. That's the storage spot for it. And you'll see a lot of other vices that have that slot in it that may not have the rear slotted jaw, but that's what that little slot is for. This screw is an expansion type mechanism. It goes through the stop and spreads the locating feature that goes down in this slot. And each one of these vices has one at the ready. All right, that is a jaw stop. All right, let's talk about table mounted stops. This one is by Edge Technologies. This is not a compensated endorsement. I just love this product, and when you're not using it, it's a great place to hang your air hose. Uh, this thing is versatile 19 ways from Sunday, and I tell you, if you can't figure out the setup with this, then this, it must be a pretty amazing setup. Now, the offset rod here is something that I use quite a bit, not only on this particular device here, but on other stops that I use, and the handy part about that is you can come in below the jaw if you're aware of the setup as you're setting it up and keep your stop below the jaw you can still access 100 percent of the perimeter of your part and if you don't start milling into your hard jaws then you're never going to hit the stop so that is one super benefit to having an offset rod like that you never have to worry about it and as a fly cutter traverses across here everything is down out of the way Great idea. Another good project for you to make. Simple three inch diameter base, one inch rod coming up through the center, and I will show you an offset uh, neck that is also very helpful. Table stop. Many different shapes and sizes. Offset rod benefit 100% of the part. Let's take a look at the stop that mounts to the back of this vise. Okay, another unit that I get a fair share of comments on is this guy right here, and this is probably one of the easiest things that there is to make. So if you haven't uh, had one of these, made one of these, seen one of these, here you go. One inch material, turned down to about 748. Same one inch material, 750 hole reamed through it, 
90 degrees, another 750 hole ream through it, 751. Saw cut, bottom half is tapped, top hole is clearance. And I used quarter 20 hardware on all of these, so I only needed one Allen key to make any adjustment on the entire setup. This rod is offset so that we can stay underneath the projection of the top jaw, very much like the one that I just showed you. And depending on whether this is mounted up or down, the versatility can uh, cover quite a range. So let's put it on the vise. Take a look. This is one of the installations that's possible with this unit. And you can see very much like the other one, the bar is below the surface of the vise. It does mount to the rear of the vise. And let's reverse this block right here to show you some of the height you can get out of this if you need it. With the rear block reversed you can go a lot higher on the setup depending on where you want to reach. This arm here is stainless steel but everything else on this is aluminum and I have never had a problem with the fact that those pieces are aluminum. This is stainless steel as well. And there is a flat on this rod. Actually, the flat's on the other side because this is normally on the CNC, and I always put a stop on the left, not the right. It's just easier to film this way. Okay, there you go. You can keep it high, do what you need to do if you're drilling, slotting, whatever. But if you're milling, fly cutting, you can reverse that block, keep everything down out of the way, out of the cutter. Great little project, and I'm sure it's driven by the dimensions of the vice jaws. Keep going. If you really want to get carried away with your vise, and this is a Kurt demonstration, this is a 675, but I'm sure that whatever vise you're using probably conforms to the same basic design. You can see that the jaws are off center in their mount. It's farther from here to the center than it is from the center to here. These jaws can be flipped over in the setup and returned if you need additional height. They will, however, not be parallel like they are now. You will need to put some type of shim underneath it or indicate the top. Let's take a look at what that looks like. You can see with the jaw inverted, you now have approximately another eighth of an inch to 140, 150 worth of vertical height. You can see the difference in the grip here versus here. And one thing I would say big time put in your toolbox is a little 2 inch piece of 3A tech stock or whatever the size is that fits here. That way you can get in here and you can unloosen these bolts when the time comes. Love that word. Another handy thing to have is a ball driver which can also go in at an angle and take care of the problem. You don't have to open the jaws up 6 inches each time you want to take these out. Put it in, snug it up, lock it down go. Alright, these can also be mounted on the front and rear. The holes on the back side of the stationary jaw and the holes on the back side of the movable jaw are the same. So you guys can mount these however you want to mount them. If you want to have a big plate that fits across the entire vise and you need a jaw back here to help you push, you go right ahead and do that. Well, I'm going to take it to the next level here and I have a kit that I call my big plate kit and that's all these nasties right here this is normally a dual vice setup but let me show you how some of these parts work and you can possibly steal some ideas from this mess this was a very job specific setup but it worked very well this particular piece of material started off as a 2 by 2 by 8 inch piece of aluminum it's got a three quarter inch shelf on the end and that allows you to lay a plate on top of this and use clamps and still get a nice grip on the part. The part was 24 inches square so it had to be done along the x-axis and it had to be registered against an outrigger stop. And this is the way I pulled that off. A couple of one, two, three blocks, some threaded rod. This particular end is not a vise. This is a parallel. 
it's the same thickness as this guy right here. So the plate lays across here, above this, rests on here, goes all the way out. There's your stop. So if you can imagine two of these side by side, it worked out very well for keeping the part parallel. Once you machined off one end, the cutter was actually beyond the stationary side of the vise, which allowed a full full cut all the way across. Two clamps, one here, one on the mirror setup on the other side. And forgive me, I chose not to take the rotary table off and put another Kurt vise on here just to set this up for uh, visual effect. You can go as big or as small as you want depending on the X travel of your machine or how many times you want to rotate your head to finish a cut that's longer than the travel of the machine. And whatever you use back here, make sure this is good and solid. A piece of stainless pipe would probably work better than aluminum because believe it or not, the half 13 thread that I'm using here, I guess it's about a what, a 12 millimeter? Once you start cranking down on this nut, you will actually distort that pipe right there. It's an incredible amount of torque on a, on a half 13 screw, so be careful if you start getting deviations in the length of uh, the pipe. You'll know why. It will actually smash it. All right, one creative setup if you wanted to stretch your capacity of your vise. That worked very well for me, and hope it works for you. Let's take one more look at a soft jaw philosophy and call it quits. And the final piece of information for this video, if you are going to make soft jaws for your vices, notice that they're off center, like I pointed out before. When you make a soft jaw for a mill vise, I would suggest highly, and it's worked for me, do not replicate what you have here. Make the jaw taller and use the distance from here to the center of the hole as the height of the jaw. In other words, make the hole symmetrical about the jaw. That allows you to use one side for one setup of the jaw, take it off, flip it over, put it back on, use the opposite side. As you can see, the majority of the soft jaws that I have in this shop are a little bit taller than standard and the hole is symmetrical about the jaw. Okay, gives you two sided options and when you flip the jaw over you have positive registration every time. There, tough off camera, I missed it. Alright, it's a really good hint. Make it a little bit taller, you can see the difference back here. Put the hole in the middle, two sides, works well. That's all I got guys. Hope you got something out of that video. As usual, thanks for watching.